All right, guys, as promised, we'll be doing a bunch of fuel system testing on the stock Toyota Tundra fuel system. And here is a complete fuel system out of my truck. Uh, well, minus the fuel tank that I replaced with this bucket just for ease of use. There is our pump set up in there. There are the lines, the factory lines. So fuel goes in, into the supply line, goes down here, into the rail, goes through the driver's side rail, follows this crossover across, feeds the passenger side rail, and there's the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, it uh, flows back through this return line and then back into our fuel tank. I have a battery here that's going to be uh, powering the pump and a constant voltage source at 13 volts and of course a fire extinguisher. So let's begin some testing. Now I'm going to start my experiment by testing the flow rate of three different fuel pumps. This is a stock, uh, non-supercharged factory pump that comes in non-flex fuel tundras. This is the pump that's supplied with a TRD supercharger kit. It's brand new. And then here is an Aeromotive Stealth uh, 325 liter per hour pump that I was running in my truck. We're gonna compare them and see how they stack up against each other. In addition to testing the three different pumps, I also wanna see if a brand new fuel filter will make a big difference compared to this used one. This one has probably about uh, 40,000 miles on it or so. And this one is brand new right here, brand new denser unit. So we're gonna check that out as well. First one up is the stock fuel pump with a brand new filter. I'm going to run each test uh, twice to ensure consistency and uh, repeatability of my results so to test these pumps we're gonna have a real life scenario of how they work inside the truck i pretty much uh, have them running through the supply lines and um, uh, rails and out of the fuel pressure regulator into this measuring bucket we're gonna see how fast uh, they fill a four liter bucket here and from that i'll be able to calculate their flow rate it's gonna work like this And there it is, our measuring bucket is full. Okay, so I ran the test twice and uh, this pump was very consistent. Uh, it took 81.4 seconds on average to fill the four liter bucket. Now we're gonna move on to this brand new TRD SC supply pump with a new filter. All right, so again, very consistent results uh, from the TRD SC kit supplied pump. Uh, we got 73 and a half uh, seconds it took to fill up the 4 liters. So next few tests we're going to do the Aeromotive 325 with a new filter and then the same pump with a used filter with about 40,000 miles in it and see if there's any difference. Well as expected this one was the highest flow pump but you know what not by a whole lot. Uh, with a clean filter we took 66.3 seconds to fill the bucket with a dirty filter it only took one second later so I'd say that's uh, well within the margin of error so not a big difference between the new one and the old one well let me crunch some numbers and uh, we'll see what they all flow all right and here are the results after crunching the numbers so the stock NA non-flex pump 177 liters an hour uh, the TRD kit pump 196 liters an hour, which is 11% more flow than the stock pump. Not a big difference at all, you know, kind of surprising that they give you this pump and it barely flows 10% more than the stock one. And then the air motive, uh, 217 LPH, 23% more than stock and 11% more than the TRD one. Again, a little bit of a gain, uh, which is, you know, good and healthy, but uh, the biggest surprise is the advertised number, the 325, and the measured number is only 217. So I wonder if uh, maybe there is truth to the restriction in the whole Tundra fuel system. So 
Uh, I'm gonna come up, uh, I'm gonna do a couple more tests here and I'll elim eliminate some of the components of the system and see if we can get more flow out of this pump. All right, so for this test, I'm doing something a little different. I'm getting rid of the whole supply line. I'm getting rid of this feed line. I'm getting rid of the driver's side fuel rail and the crossover. And I'm going from the pump right into the passenger rail and into the bucket. I need to use the passenger rail because that's where the fuel pressure regulator is. So I need to regulate the pressure at the same 43 PSI. So let's see if getting rid of all of that piping is going to make any difference. Okay, so that was a little bit quicker, 62 and a quarter seconds, but still uh, nowhere near what it's advertised at. So uh, one more thing I wanna try is give it a little bit of a boost the pump effect. So we're doing all this testing at 13 volts. Um, I'm gonna crank this up as high as it goes, 14.8. So we'll do uh, the same test at 14.8 and see what happens. So with a booster pump set up here, we knocked another 10 seconds off the fill time. Uh, still haven't reached the 325 liter per hour advertised flow. So I'm gonna do something really unrealistic here. I'm gonna take off the filter and I'm gonna just run this pipe pump straight into a bucket uh, through a big pipe so there'll be no uh, pressure demand on it in essence is going to be pumping at zero psi so it should provide us with the most possible flow oh, she definitely likes pumping with no restriction and no pressure demand at all so we might actually uh, achieve the rated flow in this way all right so here are the results so with a complete fuel system in the truck at 13 volts and uh, regulated pressure of 43 PSI, we only got 217 liters an hour out of this thing. Eliminating about two thirds of the fuel system, getting rid of one um, fuel rail, the complete fuel feed line and two crossovers, we got 6% more flow, 230 liters an hour. Boosting up the voltage to 14.8 actually gave us another 19% more flow. So that's a very, very significant improvement and uh, definitely something to look into if you're struggling to get more fuel and uh, not ready to replace the pump yet. And then the only way to be able to get the rated 325 LPH out of it, I had to run it with you know, no restriction in essence and no PSI requirement at all, which is uh, of course completely unrealistic. So I think uh, the 325 rating on this pump is, is a little bit overrated, I would say, but uh, now we know. All right, guys, I hope you learned some stuff about Tundra fuel pumps. Uh, I know I did. There'll be a lot more coming, uh, injector flow testing, pressure drops across different components, etc., etc. So stay tuned and I'll see you again. Cheers.